gradually and work on things to do. Okay, work on things you want to fix today. So this is a rhombus. And we know in general, in a rhombus, all the sides are same. So here, the information we have at hand is BD being six, from B to D being six. So it means if BD is six, since this side and this side are the same, so each of these pieces is gonna be three, three, okay? Also, since AD, AD is five, one of the sides is five, and we know in the rhombus, all the sides are the same. The sides are congruent in the rhombus. So each of these sides is gonna be five, 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 five. And also we know that the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. So these little boxes represent perpendicular, okay? And uh, the point of contact of the diagonals here is O. And we are asked to find a CO, C to O, this distance. Um, so here to do this, we only need to take out this triangle where O is formed. We have D, O, and C. And the right angle is here. DC is five, one of the sides, and then DO is three. Then OCO gonna be named X, okay? To find, to get X, what do we do? You can use Pythagorean theorem. By Pythagorean theorem, you can say each of the legs, DC is a leg, so it's gonna be three squared, plus OC is another leg, X squared, to be equals to the hypotenuse, okay? DC, which is A squared plus B squared equals to C squared, okay? So C squared here is five uh, squared. Nine squared is, uh, three squared is three, plus, uh, three times three, nine. X squared remains X squared. Five squared is five times five, 25. The next thing to do is to subtract nine from both sides. By doing so, nine minus nine is zero. We'll be left with x squared here being equals to 25 minus 9 is 16. Then by applying square root on both sides, x comes out to be square root of 16 is 4. So which means this piece has to be 4, the other piece has to be 4 as well. So it means since the sides of a rhombus are congruent, if the diagonals of a rhombus are given, it's easy, it's possible to find the size by using Pythagorean theorem. Make sure you divide the diagonals into equal pieces and then find the side you want to get, you know, by making use of what you need. But here, since the sides of the diagonals are given, the sides of the rhombus are given and one diagonal is given, you can divide that diagonal into two equal parts since the diagonal bisect each other and then find out one tri right triangle and then you'll be able to find the missing side by using Pythagorean theorem. So if you see something like this in your test, you should be able to do great. If we are done with that, can we move to the next, the next page? The next page is just behind. This time around, I'm gonna just also put all this information on the paper. A, B, C, D is the rhombus. A, C is 18. A, C is a diagonal if it's 18. So it means half of 18 gonna be what? Nine. So each of these pieces is gonna be nine because diagonals bisect each other. The other information is BD24. It means since the diagonals bisect each other, each of the pieces is going to be 12, 12. Another information is that ODC, angle ODC from O to D, then to C, this angle is 34. And we know that in a rhombus, the diagonals are angle bisector, so which means 
the other piece has to be 34 as well. And we also know that in a in a rhombus, the you know opposite angles are congruent. So this angle here is interior. So it, this angle is also interior, and both of them are alternate interior. So it means this uh, this guy has to be 34 as well. This angle 34 on the other side here is also alternate interior to this. Then the other one has to be 34 as well. And when you have those two numbers, you have 68, which is normal because opposite angles in a rhombus are congruent. So down here at D, it's going to be 68. At B, also going to be 68. Then the next thing, without even looking at the questions first, let us find all the necessary things in the, in the rhombus and then go back to the questions and answer them one by one. And since at right angle here, this place here is a right angle when diagonals, the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. So the angle here is 90. And if we then decide to take once one triangle out, one of the right triangles in this rhombus, I'm gonna have A, B and O. This is 90, this is 34. And then angle A gonna be what? And we know the sum of angles in a triangle is 180. So we're gonna do 180 equals to A, plus 34 plus 90. Then if I subtract 90 from both sides, also subtract 34 from both sides. I'm gonna, at the end of that, I'm gonna have A to be 56. 180 minus 90 is 90, 90 minus 34, 56. So it means this angle here, gonna be 56. And as we all know, let me rewrite it. This angle here is 56. This angle here to the, this angle and this angle are inch alternate interior angles. So this has to be 56 as well. And we also, we all know that when a diagonal passes through an angle in a polygon, uh, in a rhombus, it's gonna divide it into two equal parts, okay? Because diagonals are angle by sector, then it means this angle has to be 56 as well. And the alternate interior on the other side has to be 56 as well. And uh, you know, when diagonals meet the angles are perpendicular, so it means here, this is 90, this is 90, and this is 90. What else are we looking for? Let's look for the sides now. And since this is a right angle triangle, or, you know, this rhombus has four right angle triangles, then I'm gonna take one out. This one, the side A, O, B. The side O, A is nine, B, C is uh, 12. Then if you use Pythagorean theorem, if you call this your A, let me call this small A, come on, small A, small B, small C. We know by Pythagorean, we know C squared is always A squared plus B squared. A squared here, C squared is, let me say X, X squared equals to A squared is nine squared, B squared is 12 squared. And we know that nine squared is nine times nine, 81. 12 times 12, 144. And then, It's one plus one forty four is two two five, and if you apply the square root on both sides, x then becomes square root of two two five is what fifteen. So which means each of each of these sides going to be 15, 15, 15, 15. Then let's go back to the question. The questions being asked. It says angle A B O from A to B 
H2O is 34. As you can see here, this angle here. Which color goes 34? B O A. From B to O. B O A. This right angle here, B O A, is 90 because it's a right angle. C O D. From C to O to D is this black angle here. C to O to D is also a right angle, so it's 90. A, D, O. From A to D to O, this red angle here, exactly 34. And O, A, we're looking for distances now. O from O to A is nine, okay? O to D, this half here, the half of 12, 24, which is 12, this distance 12 here. C to D, C to D is one of the sides of the rhombo, so definitely 15. A, D, also one of the sides of the rhombo is 15. And then the angle O, A, D, from O to A to D is also this green angle here, which is 15, which is 90. And E number 10 could have been Angle B, A, C. From B to A to C is definitely this purple angle here, which is 56. So these are the things we needed to do today. When the diagonals are given, the angles are given, and the sides are given, or uh, none of these guys, you know, maybe it's just few of these guys are given. To get the side in a round bus when the diagonals are given, just take half of the angle, you know, or half of each of the diagonals, get out, get a right triangle, a right triangle out of the diagonal, and then put each of the half of the diagonals there. And then the, the longest distance, which is the hypotenuse, find it by using diagonal uh, Pythagorean theorem. By finding the hypotenuse there, the hypotenuse is definitely one of the sides of the rhombus. And if you wanna get the angles, when the diagonals meet, we're gonna have four right angles there. So be careful about them. So those four angles are the yellow, the purple, the black, and the green. And to get the angles at each side of the, uh, uh, on each of the, vertices of the rhombus. If one is given to get the other side, you know that diagonals will always bisect angles in a rhombus. Therefore, if one angle is given like 34 here, the other half gonna be 34. And far away, when angles are when angles are opposite in the in the rhombus, they are definitely congruent. So you have to use that idea too. And the sum of angles in a Rhombus is always 360 because it's a four sided figure. That's all for today. So, for those that did not do their homework yesterday, I've already called names. Please.